What is up guys, Randomonium here with your 2016 Summer Split Predictions video. Uh, this is the video where I'm going to break down all of the rules and roster changes for the Summer Split. So hopefully you guys have the best information possible to, for your fantasy LCS drafts. The way this video is going to work is I'm going to first break down all of the rule changes between the Spring and the Summer Split. Then I'm going to break down all of the roster changes and how that's going to influence the teams. And then finally, I'm going to rank all the players and let you know who you should pick first in your fantasy draft. So first up are the rule changes. So EU is going to be going to a best of two matches. NA is going to be going to a best of three matches, which meaning that whoever wins two out of the three matches wins the match. Uh, EU is also going to have two streams, uh, both on Thursday and on Friday, five matches per day. NA is going to have one stream on Friday where they have two matches and then two streams on Saturday and Sunday where they have four matches per day. The other big change that they're making is how they're going to do the fantasy point scoring. So you're going to have two options when you initially create your fantasy draft. You can either do the first two games method of scoring or the best game method of scoring. So for the first two games method of scoring, which is the default method of scoring, it will only count the first two games played uh, for the NA players in terms of their points. And this is done so that NA players won't have an unfair advantage over EU and the amount of fantasy points they can score. So this will be a fairly uh, balanced method between uh, NA and EU players. So there won't be that much favoritism on whether you want to pick NA players over EU players. The other option is the best game method, where it just takes the best game that the player has that week, and that's how many fantasy points they get. So if the player gets 50 points the first game and 10 points the second game, they get 50 points for the week. This has the tendency to probably favor the NA players, because NA players have the potential to play more games than EU players, because it's the best of three, vice the best of two. Um, so if you decide to go with this method, just be aware that you might want to favor NA players a little bit more than EU players. Uh, they've also added an AFK check for the draft portion of Fantasy LCS, so that way, you know, if people aren't there, um, you're not just waiting around a lot. And then also on top of that, they've also improved it so that auto-pick will occur in 8 seconds by 60, and people who fail to pick will automatically have auto-pick turned on for them, and that's a feature that you can turn on or off. Um, so if you want to just auto-pick, you can just turn that on and leave the screen open for your draft phase. So this should speed up draft phase quite a lot. So let's get down to the uh, the roster changes. Uh, so for uh, the nomenclature for players, if you see a player's name in red, that means that the player did not play in NA or EU LCS last split. If their name is in blue, then they played on a different team and for NA or EU last split. And if the player's uh, name has an asterisk next to it, that means that they are not considered a resident of the region that they're playing. So it could be an EU player who's playing in NA, or it could be a Korean player who's playing in EU. Those players will have an asterisk next to their name. And the importance of that is that there's a three-fifths rule in LCS where three out of the five players have to be from the region that they're representing. All right, first up is uh, Catalog Gaming, uh, runners up from MSI. Uh, they have the exact same roster, no changes. Uh, the big thing is that, that because Catalog Gaming did so well at MSI, they're going to be very high priority picks for fantasy drafting. And they did not score very well in fantasy drafting last split. So I think that even though CLG is going to do very well this split, they're going to be overvalued as fantasy picks. So I would advise you guys not to pick them up because you're going to have to pick them up in the first couple picks in order to get them, and they're not going to be the top scores for fantasy. So great picks if they if they don't get picked up first, definitely pick them up. But do not waste one of your first picks on CLG players. Uh, moving on to TSM. TSM only has one change, and that's at support. Uh, swapping out Yellow Star for Biofrost. Biofrost is a challenger level player. I think the TSM is going to struggle early in the split because they always struggle early in the split. Um, but B. Erickson and Double Lift are solid fantasy picks uh, that you probably want to pick up. Immortals has not changed anyone, and if anything, I think Immortals is going to be stronger this split than last split. They have now had an entire split to play with each other. They are very hungry. They thought they should have won last uh, split, and they kind of, you know, 
underestimated their opponent and wound up losing in the playoffs. They had a fantastic run going 17-1. and one. Uh, So I think they're going to come back a little bit more humble, a little bit hungrier. So definitely pick up Immortal players if you can, but beware that you're going to have to pick them very, very early in the draft. I do think that Immortals is going to be one of the top fantasy scorers uh, this split as well, so they're definitely worth one of those early picks if you can get them. Team Liquid. Uh, Team Liquid has doesn't have any changes. Uh, they did some very good substitutions last split, bringing in Dardock and Matt off of their 10-man roster. It seems like they're solidifying into a 5-man roster now. Uh, and I do think that Dardock, Phoenix, and Piglet are definitely all fantastic picks. Um, I definitely would also keep an eye on Lorlo and Matt, who are both solid players, but Lorlo definitely struggled a little bit, and then Matt just didn't get that many fantasy points last split. But uh, yeah, Dardock, Phoenix, and Piglet will all get lots of fantasy points, and you might be able to get them a little bit lower in the draft than you normally would because there's not that much attention on Team Liquid right now. So just keep an eye on that. They might drop in the draft pick, and then you definitely want to pick them up. All right, Cloud9. Cloud9 has a lot of changes to their team. They did really well last split. Uh, they're bringing an impact for balls in top lane, which is definitely an upgrade. Uh, impact is a really good top laner. And then they're bringing back Meteos. Meteos was a former Cloud9 jungler. Uh, and now he's going to be back in the jungle, substituting out for Rush. I don't know how I feel about this change. I, I felt like Rush is a better jungler, but I haven't really been paying attention to Meteos' stream. I know he's been working really hard on improving, so um, hopefully he comes back and he's learned from his mistakes and he's a much better jungler now. And then finally, uh, Bunny Fufu will be taking over the support role. They do have Smoothie on their roster, but I think it's going to... Bunny Fufu is the starter. Uh, the real question, though, is who's going to be shot calling because High is no longer uh, a part of the team, and we've seen in the past that when High is not the shot caller in Cloud9, uh, things do not go well for Cloud9. So Medio struggled last split being the, sh the shot caller, or struggled last year being the shot caller, and then Bunny struggled last split being the shot caller. So it's a real question of who's been working on their shot calling and whether or not they can actually succeed without high. Uh, so for that reason, I kind of think that you should hold off picking up Cloud9 players, um, unless you can get them for like a steal in the later rounds of the draft. Hold off on Cloud9 until we figure out whether or not they can shot call effectively without high. Some of the biggest changes for the NA LCS was NRG. They've only got one player returning from last split, uh, which is GBM. And they've picked up some fantastic players. They picked up Quas and Santorin. If you guys don't know, Quas was former Team Liquid top laner, one of the best top laners in NA in 2015. Santorin is the former TSM jungler, who is also a fantastic player, currently rated number 32 on the challenger ladder. Uh, then they also picked up OHQ and Kiwi Kid, uh, which is a good bot lane. OHQ had a ton of success in Korea. He struggled a little bit here in NA. Um, but that's kind of expected when somebody transfers from region to region. Uh, and then Kiwi Kid, I know he gets a lot of flack, but he's a he's a solid support. So I think that NRG is definitely kind of the dark horse right now in NA. Uh, and they could definitely upset a lot of people. Uh, it's just a question of whether or not they've had enough time to gel together and really understand each other and have a good shot calling uh, system in place. All right, moving on to Echo Fox. Echo Fox did not make any roster changes, which is really good. I'm really glad they didn't change anything uh, because when the team was together, when the team was actually able to play, they showed a lot of promise. Uh, the problem was that they had all sorts of visa issues and that, you know, KFO, uh, Hard, and Froggen were not able to play most of the split. Hard is actually Canadian, so he had a lot of visa issues getting from between uh, Canada and U.S. And then Froggen, of course, from EU and KFO from Korea. Um, but now I'm hoping the visa issues are resolved. We can actually see how good this Echo Fox team is. So definitely keep an eye on Echo Fox. They may not be people that you pick up in the initial draft, but definitely keep an eye on them uh, as the split progresses. All right, Team Envy is one of the new teams uh, that we have in the NA LCS. They bought Renegade's LCS spot. If you guys haven't been following, uh, what happened was towards the end of last split, there was a very controversial trade between TDK and Renegades where Renegades was able to pick up uh, Seraph and Ninja from TDK. 
uh, and the trade just looked fishy. It didn't look right. I mean, even to me, it didn't look right. Uh, and, and Riot did some investigating. They found some very shady things going on, and they actually wound up banning uh, Renegade's owners. They wound up banning uh, TDK's owners, and they wound up banning Team Impulse's owners. So uh, none of the players are implicated, so none of the players have anything bad happening to them. But all the owners got the ban hammer, which is why we now have Team Envious. Um, and you can see that they, they still have Seraph and Ninja on the team, as well as uh, Hakuo. Um, but they picked up Proxen from Team Impulse, and then they've also got Laud from NRG, and they've also got Nien, um, who's going to be competing at that 80 carry spot. Um, but the big thing about uh, Team Envy is they've already got uh, Call of Duty, CSGO, Gears of War, Halo, Overwatch, Smite, and StarCraft team. So this is a very well-established organization. So the, the team is going to have a lot of support, which bodes very well for them. I think that they might struggle early in the split just because it's a, it's a new team. But with all of the support they have, I think that they could really pick up some steam towards the latter half of the split. Apex Gaming is one of the um, new teams that won in the uh, promotion tournament. Uh, they beat TDK in the promotion tournament, uh, and they're going with a 10-man roster. And, and because of that, I don't recommend picking them up for your initial fantasy draft, because we don't know yet who's going to be starting on Apex Gaming. They've got a ton of talent, though, so definitely watch Apex Gaming. And once they figure out who the starters are, you definitely want to take a look at those players and see if you want to trade for them to add them to your team. So for top lane, uh, they've got Chris and Ray. Chris is uh, number two challenger, was number one for at least a short period of time, so he's competing for that. I don't have that much information on Ray besides that he's um, a Korean. Uh, and then we've got, uh, in the jungle, we've got Shrimp and Diamond Prox. Diamond Prox is obviously from Unicorns of Love. Mid lane, we've got Shifter and Keen, both solid mid laners that have kind of been bouncing around either the Challenger series or the LCS. At 80 carry, we've got Apollo and Roar. Apollo, obviously, from Dignitas. And then for support, we've got uh, Expecial and Conquan. Um, the big reason why Apex Gaming was able to get Shifter and Apollo onto their team is because Apex Gaming actually purchased Dignitas's. Uh, challenger spot. So Dignitas lost in the promotion tournament, got relegated to the Challenger series, and then Apex Gaming, who won the promotion tournament or got the the spot, um, purchased Dignitas's Challenger team, and then got Shifter and Apollo uh, when they acquired Dignitas. So that was kind of a very interesting. It looks like Apex Gaming is definitely making a power play to try and uh, establish themselves as a, as a major. Uh, esports team. Okay, so the final team for NALCS is Phoenix One. Uh, we only found out about this team very recently. Uh, this was the team that bought uh, Team Impulse's uh, spot, and you can see that they have Mash and Gate um, from Team Impulse as well as Pyrene. Uh, and then they picked up Zig and Brandini for top lane. They've got Inori in uh, jungle, and they've got Slushy, who's also competing for a mid spot. Uh, this team was put together, it seemed like, very last minute, so I definitely want to advise against picking up these guys in your initial draft, but keep an eye on them. Uh, they might surprise a few people. But yeah, right now, don't pick them up right away, because I don't think that they've had that much time to play with each other. All right, moving on to EU LCS. So obviously we'll start off with G2, who won the split. They had a very disappointing showing at MSI. Uh, a lot of people have been attributing that to the fact that they did not practice before MSI, which I definitely think was a mistake. Uh, but G2 is actually looks like they're the best team in EU right now. And the big reason for that is um, their bot lane is now going to be Zven and Mithy, which, um, if you guys don't know, those are the bot lane from Origin, uh, really dominant bot lane and G2. If you would say their weak link last split was their bot lane, so now they're picking up one of the best bot lanes in EU. On top of the fact that they've already got a very strong top lane, jungle, and mid lane, I think that G2 is definitely the best team in Europe right now. They're, I think, they're the favorites to win the split, and I definitely think you should pick up anyone you can that's on their team. Uh, but 
be aware that they're, those players are going to go very early in the draft, so you're going to need to pick them early if you want them. Next up is Origin, who is a runner-up. Obviously, they lost their bot lane, but they are picking up Forgiven and Hybrid, which I think are uh, two very good players. It's just a question of how much time the team has gelled and had a chance to play with each other, and whether or not this is kind of a wake-up call. Because Zven and Mithy were kind of the anchors of that team, and they lost that. Um, and I know there's a lot of um, controversy, and I know that a lot of people were saying, oh, Soaz and Amazing and Power of Evil aren't pulling their weight on the team, and that's why Zven and Mithy left. Blah, 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 blah. We really don't know why Zven and Mithy left. Uh, but hopefully this is kind of a wake-up call for Origin, and hopefully they uh, play a little bit better. But I definitely would not recommend them as top picks right now. I definitely would hold off and see what happens with Origin. Fnatic only made one change in the mid-season was they brought back Yellow Star at support. Um... So I think the Fnatic is going to be playing better now. I don't think that they're going to be back to their 2015 form. Uh, I still have a lot of questions about Gamsu and Spirit. But I think that uh, Fevabin is going to do better, and I think that Reckles is going to do much better with uh, Yellowstar as his support. HUK only made one change. They now have Freeze uh, as their AD carry instead of uh, Forgiven. Uh, H2K, in my mind, is probably the second best team in Europe right now, based off of their lineup. And the reason for that is Freeze is incredibly underrated as an AD carry. This guy was number two, I believe, on the EU uh, Challenger rankings. He is a phenomenal AD carry, and, and you really didn't get to see how good he was when he was playing on Renegades. Now that he has a good team surrounding him, I think H2K is going to turn a lot of heads. They're going to really surprise a lot of people at the beginning of the split. Unicorns of Love had some pretty major changes. They looked really fantastic at the beginning of the spring split, but then they just kind of fell apart towards the end. Um, so yeah, I don't really know what to what to say about Unicorns of Love. I would definitely kind of hold off on picking up uh, anyone from their team until we figure out whether these roster changes were good roster changes. Um, but you see they picked up Move, uh, Exile, and Veritas for Jungle, Mid, and AD Carry. Exile, he's a number three ranked challenger in EU West. Uh, Move has been bounced around. I think he was on Gra Gravity last uh, year. Um, didn't have that much information on Veritas, though. All right, moving on to Team Vitality. They had two changes. They brought in Mighty Bear uh, for Jungle and Police. Uh, for AD carry, I don't know how I feel about these 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 roster swaps. I don't think that Vitality as is as strong as they were last split. That said, I do think that uh, Cabo Shard is a good pickup. He was just an absolutely dominant um, top laner. It's just a question of whether or not they're going to be as good as they were last split. All right, Splice. They only made one change. They brought in Minx at support. Um, I can understand the reasoning behind this, because I think Splice felt like that they underperformed and that they were much better than they were, so their mentality is, okay, we're just going to keep the same team together um, and just work on our shot calling and work on, you know, the, our fundamentals in the offseason, and then we'll come back, and then everybody else is going to be not used to playing with one another, and we'll be able to, to rise a lot better in the rankings. We'll see if that plays out. Um, I think this place will improve. It's just a question of whether or not they're going to be able to improve enough to get one of those playoff spots. Our right, next up is uh, Rock Hat. Rock Hat definitely uh, picked up a better AD carry in Steelback. Steelback was performed phenomenal on Unicorns of Love. And then they picked up uh, Parang and Rays. Uh, for top lane and support. Now, Parang and Raze were teammates in Korea. I don't really have that much information on them besides that. Um, so the real question is going to be communication, um, whether or not Parang and Raze can, can transition well from Korea to EU. Uh, and that, I think that leaves a lot of questions on Rock Hat. But if they can get behind Steelback, Steelback is definitely a good enough AD carry that he can carry the team. Uh, so it's going to be a question of how much time they've had to integrate with each other and communicate well with each other. 
Our Giants had a incredibly disappointing split uh, last season. Um, Pepiniero is gone, replaced by Knight, who's um, who's a Korean, and then they've also picked up Max Lore, who's challenger level jungler for EU. Uh, they're keeping uh, Sunstar and Hustland and Smitty J on uh, the team. And then the question is whether or not Giants is going to be better. And the question is, the answer is that yes, Giants is probably going to be better than they were last split because they were horrible last split. Uh, but I don't think that they're going to be a top-ranked team, and I definitely cannot recommend any of their players to be picked up in the initial fantasy draft. Uh, last team we're going to talk about is FC Shock 04. Uh, this is actually a, a football club, or as Americans like to call it, soccer. Um, so FC Schalke 04 is the 14th most valuable football club in the world. Uh, and they bought a um, EU LCS spot from Elements. So you can see that pretty much all of these players are from the original Elements team. Uh, the only trade that they made was Fox is now going to be mid lane, which is definitely an upgrade over Ica in my opinion. So I think that um, Shock 04 is going to be a very... It's going to be very interesting to see this team because they've got a ton of money behind them. The roster is very similar, and Elements was always kind of knocking on that door for that playoff spot, so I think they're definitely a contender for a playoff spot. Uh, this split, and this is very exciting that now we're getting these really big sports organizations are starting to invest in esports, and it's kind of legitimizing esports i guess you would say uh you're seeing a lot more reporting on esports on espn and things like that so it seems like esports is becoming more mainstream and um more accepted by the general populace so that's that's very exciting to see all right so let's get into how i break down uh, all the teams and all the players as far as fantasy points are concerned so i break it down into five categories purple are your top picks Red are kind of like your A-tier picks. Um, blue is going to be kind of your flex roll, maybe bench spots. Green is going to be your sleeper picks that you really want to keep an eye on. And if you can pick them up uh, in like the later parts of the draft, they might be worth a late pickup in the draft. And then for yellow, you want to avoid these players, at least initially. But they might be good subs week to week as the season progresses. So for teams... Um, I've got Immortals, G2, CLG, and H2K. Those are kind of my S-tier teams. You can see that for all the teams, all the players, the uh, point values in parentheses, that that's the points that they got last split per game. Uh, so just take a look at that. I'm not saying that they're going to get that many points this split, but that's what they got last split. So, yeah, i definitely pick up Immortals or G2 first, um, but those teams are probably... Probably going to go very early in the draft. Uh, for my A-tier teams, I've got Team Liquid, Fnatic, Vitality, and TSM. I think Team Liquid is definitely um, A-tier, possibly S-tier. Fnatic is probably going to do a lot better with Yellow Star support. I'm not sure how I feel about Vitality or TSM. They might move around a little bit. Um, and then moving on to the uh, B-tier in blue... Energy, Echo Fox, and Cloud9. These teams are on are in this part of the list because there's a lot of unanswered questions about them. I know that they're good teams. It's just a question of how good are they. Uh, for my sleeper picks, I've got Unicorns of Love, Origin, and Apex Gaming. Uh, definitely keep an eye on Apex Gaming. They could have a very successful split or they could completely crash and burn. I'm not really sure what's going to happen with them, but keep an eye on them. And then you can see the rest of the teams are in yellow. Just hold off on those teams. There's no need to pick them up early. Moving on to top lane. My top guys, Huni, Kikis, Cabo Shard, and Odoame. Uh, I know a lot of people are going to say, why isn't Darshan on this list? Uh, Darshan didn't get that many points. And he didn't look that fantastic at MSI. Um, and I think that people are going to pick him up early. Just because he's on CLG and CLG did so well, I don't think he's going to be a top fantasy point scorer. Um, so yeah, I would advise against picking up Darshan. He's definitely going to be overvalued as a player, or as a fantasy LCS player. Um, moving down the list, you can see Hanser, Vivisachi, Lorlo, Impact, Gamsu, Soaz, in that order. Uh, the people you really should keep your eye on are Quas and Seraph and KFO. These guys 
could explode. Quas was fantastic when he was on Team Liquid. It's a question of whether or not he is going to still be at his same form this split. Seraph looked amazing when he played for Renegades. He was actually one of the top point scorers in top lane when he played on Renegades, but he didn't play that many games. So if you can pick up Seraph later in the draft, he's definitely worth a spot on your team. And then KFO kind of underperformed because I think that they, you know, there's a lot of stress and confusion with uh, Echo Fox last split with all the Visa issues they had. Uh, notable people, Chris and Ray. I think that both these guys are worthy of a spot on a team. It's just a question of who's the starter. So I wouldn't pick up either of those players until we know who the starter on Apex is. All right, for jungle, obviously I've got Rainover, Trick, and Dardock, as well as Yankos as my top four. These guys, obviously, they performed the best last split, which no exception uh, as to why they're not up at the top. Uh, I've also got Xmithy, Svenskaren, Spirit, and Move. Uh, Move might be a little bit um, questionable for some people, but uh, he did do very well when he was playing on Gravity, and I think that he's a good pickup for Unicorns of Love. I was kind of unimpressed by Amazing Proxen uh, last split. And then Mighty Bear, the only reason why he's on there as kind of B tier is I think Vitality is going to be kind of a B tier B -tier team. Uh, so it makes sense that he's going to score about that amount of fantasy points. Uh, people that you should keep your eye on, out for are Meteos, a Santorin, and Hard. I think you're seeing a trend here. A lot of the NRG players and a lot of the Echo Fox players are going to be kind of in my sleeper picks uh, because they really could... Those are the teams that could really break out uh, this split. And then obviously I still have all the Apex players are going to be in yellow because we don't know who the starters are going to be. But once we know who the starters are going to be, uh, definitely look at those players and possibly add them to your team. Moving on to mid lane... Uh, Poe Belter, Perks, Phoenix, and Bjergsen. Bjergsen kind of had a bad split as far as fancy points is concerned last split. I think you're going to see him return to form, and you're gonna, he's going to be one of the top fancy point scorers. Uh, I think Poe Belter and Perks are going to be picked up immediately in the draft. They're going to be one of the first picks in the draft. Um, you might be able to pick up Phoenix for a steal later on. I don't think a lot of people are talking about Phoenix. Uh, so he might be able to drop to the second round, in which case he'd be a fantastic pickup. In my A tier, Ryu, Nukta, Kuhi, and Jensen. Jensen was one of the top scorers last split, but because of all the changes to Cloud9, I didn't feel comfortable putting him at that S tier. Um, but once uh, Cloud9 figures out their shot calling, and once they kind of return to form, he's definitely an S tier pick. Uh, moving on, Froggen, Febben, and GBM down at the B tier. This is mainly because they kind of have all been underperforming, uh, but hopefully they they do better this split. People that you should watch are definitely uh, Ninja, Fox on uh, Shaco Four, and um, Power Evil. I think Power Evil definitely underperformed. He looked really good when he was on. Unicorns of Love, and then he just seemed lost when he was on Origin, so hopefully they've had enough time to really have him gel with the rest of the team. Uh, Alright, moving on to AD Carry, I've got Wild Turtle, Zven, Piglet, and Stixay as my top four. I think Wild Turtle and Zven and Stixay are all going to go really early in the draft, and I think that Piglet, a lot of people aren't going to be talking about him, and he might drop a little bit lower in the draft, and you could pick him up for a steal, but he's definitely an S-tier pickup. The other person who's S-tier, who's like bordering on S-tier, that you really should take a look at is Freeze. I don't think a lot of people are going to talk about Freeze at all, but this guy scored over 16 points per game, so thirty over 32 points per week on Renegades. On Renegades, he was scoring 32 points per week. Now he's on H2K, so I think he's going to be scoring at least 40 points a week. At least 40 points a week. So that's definitely S-tier material. Um, so if you can pick him up in like the second, you might even be able to get him in the third round because nobody's talking about him. Definitely pick him up. We've also got uh, Double If, Reckles, and Forgiven. I'd be a little bit suspicious about Forgiven. Even on H2K, he didn't score that many points, and now he's on a weaker origin team. 
Uh, so I don't know how he's going to perform this split, especially with a lot of the, the issues he's been having. He, he got conscripted into the Greek army, and then he got a waiver. So I know there's a, there's a lot of stuff going on in his personal life that might affect his play as well. So just be careful with, uh, with forgiving. He's a great player, but I don't think he's going to put that up that many fantasy points. Uh, for B tier, I've got Sneaky, Steelback, and Keith. I know a lot of people are going to say, why is Sneaky B tier? He's got, he scored so many fancy points. Yeah, he did, but Cloud9 doesn't have high anymore. And until we know how Cloud9 is going to perform, uh, with their shot calling, uh, you got to be really careful drafting Cloud9 players, especially early in the draft, because they might flop at the beginning of the split. Uh, Steelback was one of the top point scorers on Unicorns of Love. Now he's on a weaker Rockcat team, so I think his fantasy points will go down. It's just a question of how much they'll go down. Uh, for my sleeper picks, I've got Police on Vitality. Vitality should perform well, and Police is a good AD carry, so he might be able to rack up a decent amount of fantasy points. I've got Veritas for Unicorns of Love, and OHQ for NRG. NRG is definitely one of those sleeper teams. OHQ performed really poorly when he played last split um but i think he's going to perform a lot better this split uh especially with this kind of sleeper energy team so definitely um if you can pick up ohq at the end of the draft he might be worthy of a pickup all right moving on to support obviously i gotta have adrian and mythy at the top uh i think that they're going to be hands down your top point scorers for support uh, rounding out the S tier list is Matt and Vander. Um, Matt definitely, he had a little bit lower fancy points than I think that, uh, quite a few other people, but I think that he's going to be a solid pick, especially with Piglet. Uh, and then Vander with Freeze is going to, they're going to create a lot of fancy points, I have a feeling. Moving on to S tier, Yellowstar, Aphromoo, Kasing, and Hillsang. Aphromoo is definitely worthy of that A pickup. Um, but I think a lot of people are going to overvalue him and he's going to go very early in the draft for support. So I, I think he's going to be overvalued and you're not going to get your, uh, your money's worth of him, unfortunately. Uh, moving on to B tier, hybrid, bunny, foo, foo, kiwi kid, um, bunny. I really don't know. Bunny's looked amazing and bunny has looked horrible. So it's just a question of whether he has his confidence back, um, and whether or not he feels comfortable shot calling on this new cloud nine team for sleeper picks i have biofrost big and raise so biofrost uh coming in for tsm because he's on tsm just by the fact that he's on a good team like tsm he's gonna get a lot of fantasy points it's just a question of whether or not he's going to excel and become one of the top fantasy point players so i don't know if i'd pick up biofrost immediately unless you have double lift in your team in which case it might be worth picking up biofrost but you definitely should keep an eye out for him. Uh, big, obviously, on Echo Fox. I think they're going to do a lot better this split. And then Raze uh, is a support for Steelback on Rocket. If Steelback gets a lot of points, then Raze will most likely get a lot of points. So he also might be kind of a sleeper pick where you can get a lot more points than you think um, by picking him up. That said, I think you should be able to get a better pickup than Raze with the initial fantasy draft. So anyway, that pretty much concludes this uh, prediction video let me know what you guys think in the comments do you think that i'm right do you think i'm wrong um i'm always open to your guys's comments i love having discussions with you guys i will be doing these videos every week i will be giving you guys prediction videos and letting you know how things are changing who the starters are going to be things like that so definitely keep checking back in on this channel if you like the content on the channel, please subscribe. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help the channel gain visibility. Um, but I hope you guys have a fantastic day. This is Randomonium signing off.